Hey guys, it's Core Ross and welcome to Myth Busting Rainbow Six Extraction. So today we're going to be busting all the myths I have discovered so far since playing because there's been a few surprises here and there. But also if you guys have any suggestions for myths, let me know in the comments below. But let's get into it. So the very first myth I thought of was, can I take a hostage through the airlock? You're supposed to take him to the evac and get him out. But here I am in the airlock moving on to the next zone. So you can see that the objective disappeared, but he's still there. Objective is still above his head. You can see that we've moved on from the hostage rescue, but he's still alive and fine. And if I pick him up, you can actually see that I have two main objectives in this zone. I now have a serial scan and I still have the rescue from the previous zone. I'm going to have to, at some point, attempt to take this guy to a boss fight. I'm going to have to try that. But we are in our zone and I'm going to see if I can actually get him out and evac him back to safety. Not only that, this is a good strategy because sometimes you will find the hostage relatively close to the airlock rather than the evac. And if the enemies are in high numbers and you're playing the hardest difficulty, it might be best to then go to a new zone where they haven't yet seen you where you can then evac them you know, in a more safer environment. But here we go, dropping off our hostage and yeah rescue is complete we were successful even though we were in a completely different zone which is very cool and that is confirmed now this is a myth but also a tip and it's how to get the lurker challenge so you have to decloak a lurker this was such a pain in the ass to get but here's an example of me actually doing it in game so first of all you gotta find a lurker maybe kill everyone else around it and then you have to do some damage to the lurker this will cause the lurker to then cloak and I used a freeze grenade or a status grenade to actually get it to decloak and that worked brilliantly and I managed to complete my challenge. So if you're having issues, and I expect a lot of people are having issues getting this one done, that's my recommendation. Bring along a freeze grenade and just do some damage to the lurker. Make sure you don't hit their weak point and you'll be fine. Impacts didn't seem to work. I tried Nomad charging one of them, which actually it can basically eviscerate the enemy. So yeah, that is, to me, the best way to do it. And that is actually confirmed. And for a long time, I thought I was never going to get that challenge done. Now, something that's not apparent right away is that you can melee bloaters safely. So when you actually melee them, you will push them away and they'll go into a detonation sequence. So it's basically the safest way to deal with them. Because, of course, if you shoot them when they're point blank, you'll get hurt. But if you, you know, give them a melee attack, they'll actually get pushed back and then detonate, making it, I think, a lot safer. So certainly confirmed, melee the bloaters. You can remove spores yourself. So of course, this game is brutal with randoms. So doing it solo is quite nice. And you can actually destroy spores with flashbangs. So of course, non-lethal gadget. And this means if you want to, you can bring some flashbangs along with you and just flash yourself so that it actually removes the flashbangs from you. You can also do this with impacts as well. You can do it with the stasis grenades too. And of course, the main gadget operator abilities as well. Only kind of thing I would say though, is don't rely totally on impact grenades for this because there is game modes in the future, like there's gonna be assignments soon. They'll have friendly fire on. So you don't want to be relying on that just in case you get used to it and then suddenly you end up blowing yourself up in the future. But certainly it's confirmed there's lots of different ways to get the spores off you in solo play and I'm really actually surprised how good solo play is in this game. That was very unexpected. Now staying on the subject of spores, I found out that each spore is considered a kill, which means it's amazing for actually getting some of your challenges done. So a great example here, I had to get some explosive kills. I'm on 8 of 20, but if I use an impact on these spores, that suddenly jumps up to 11 of 20. So it's confirmed. And I used this for all kinds of challenges and it was very, very effective. Like there's one we need to get a certain amount of kills in a certain amount of time. And I just literally impacted some spores and was done with that challenge. Also, I think it's worth pointing out, sometimes you'll get challenges that come up saying that you need to be in a squad to do something. And you don't, you can do them all solo, which is very nice too. Transitioning to a new zone with a target. So of course we brought a hostage through and that actually worked. I thought he was just gonna vanish as soon as I hit the button. But I thought, gotta try with a target now, even though it is definitely not in any way a good uh, strategy. But I thought, yeah, why not give it a go? So here we are, we've got our target in with us. It's an elite and we're gonna request 
the transition over and you'll see that he just pops out of existence he's gone so that was unfortunate i totally would have been quite happy to pull him all the way to the end of a game or something that'd be quite fun but uh yeah unfortunately busted and i can only assume that the developers did put some proper thought into allowing the hostage through but not enemies although it's definitely weird that the enemy just disappears although that's what i totally thought was going to happen with the hostage now another airlock myth was can i jam the doors open with something so i tried with chanka's turret here so jammed it into the doors i tried to get to him but i couldn't quite and then went and activated the airlock sequence and of course it counts down now i assume the game engine can't load up two you know full areas at once so the outcome here of course was not much of a surprise but I do love the fact that Chanka has an audio line for his turret getting destroyed and he sounds very sad about it. Not my LMG. Did you know that in this game you have a threat indicator? So there's a little gadget on the operator's hands and normally it's flickering blue but as soon as an enemy sees you it turns red. And it is really as simple as that because if you break line of sight with the enemies the threat indicator will go down even though the threat hasn't actually gone down if an enemy is coming right at you then it'll still be blue until they make visual contact then it'll go up to red and i think for the most part people are not going to notice the change from blue to red when playing normal gameplay but there's also an audio cue as well which you might have heard of but never actually knew what this sound was and this is the sound and what that sound means is that an alien is looking at you not detected you Simply looking your way might be suspicious and you can either of course hear that noise and then turn around and shoot the bad guy or you can move away so you break line of sight and they don't fully detect you. But yeah in this game there is a threat indicator and it can be very useful for the stealth elements in this game. So that is confirmed. You can fuse doors and windows. So fuse in this game I thought was going to be amazing. But then when you actually play with him, he's not that great because there's not many soft walls. There's also not really much in the way of elevation with soft surfaces below you to like blow up an objective below you or something like that. However, there is ways around it that I didn't realize right away, which is you can actually fuse barricades in these of like special barricades for this game that you can put up and you can fuse them just like you can castle barricades. And that is awesome because it means if you're defending an objective then suddenly fuse is actually really useful also he can fuse doors as well that are closed so you're able to actually again close the door set up a defensive point and fuse through that door to take out a whole bunch of bad guys or if you've got a target and you know roughly where he is or maybe you're going to lead him into a corridor and remember no friendly fire so if you wanted to you could set up a fuse and outside of a door and then lure a you know an actual alien to you and then blow yourself up but of course you're gonna be fine with no friendly fire but the enemy is gonna get destroyed so that's confirmed and fuse isn't quite as rubbish as i thought he was when i first played him in this game and now the final myth for today's video is air jab air burst so this was one of the trailers and it got me super excited because when nomad was originally put in the test ever after her reveal her air jabs had air burst which meant you could fire over cover and it would detonate above an enemy. And it was extremely powerful, actually far too powerful for a PvP game like Siege. However, after seeing that trailer, I thought, oh yes, we're going to be able to do that in Extraction, bring back the old air burst. It's like bringing back the old Chanka turret. And yeah, unfortunately, no. So I went and I tested. And first of all, the air burst just doesn't work. But also direct hitting an enemy as well doesn't work. It has to fall, land on the ground, do its like animation for becoming armed, and then it goes off. So it is unfortunate. I would have loved the air burst. Maybe it was not good. Like first of all, spores set off the air burst. So you can imagine if you were firing an air burst at a you know big important enemy and it detonated as soon as it left your gun because of spores, that would not be great. But yeah, I was wishing there was a way around it and it would have worked. Maybe, maybe you know, making them not go off with spores or stuff like that. And then you could use air burst. But yeah, very sad. I would have loved to have seen that. So that, unfortunately, is busted. So there we go, guys. That is the end of the first Mythbuster episode for Rainbow Six Extraction. Let me know if I got anything wrong. Let me know if you have any suggestions for other stuff. 
or anything you discovered that you were surprised by as well because most of this episode was just simple stuff that I assumed wrongly especially the fuse that was the biggest change for me once I figured out I could fuse doors and windows then suddenly I seen how powerful and useful he is in extraction so anyway guys thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time